Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I am here today at the Cody Firearms Museum, part of the Buffalo Bill Center of the West, and I am taking a look at some of the guns in their collection, and some of the gun-shaped objects in their collection, like this one. Uh, this is a, a tool room model of a Hudson machine gun. This was developed by a guy named Robert F. Hudson, and I believe his son, Robert F. Hudson Jr., also contributed to this at eventually. Um, apparently, Hudson was basically a traveling salesman, and when World War I broke out, he was too old for service, for military service, but he wanted to do something towards the war effort, so he decided to invent his own machine gun. Uh, apparently, he had never really had any familiarity with machine guns until he started working on his own. And interestingly, by the mid to late 1930s, he actually had a, a gun that the U.S. Navy tested and according to one account like sort of adopted or at least got a couple guns for actual field trials. Now Hudson has a number of patents that he filed throughout the 1920s and I'll list the numbers um, that have a number of different features to them. None of those patents quite match up exactly with this gun although this gun looks very much like a picture that does survive of one of a couple Navy guns that were tested. So this gun is in uh, 30 caliber, 30-06. It is magazine fed. It would have had a magazine here. Whether it was a proprietary magazine or a BAR magazine, I don't know. Um, and again, this is a tool room model, so it doesn't necessarily bear a perfect representation of what the Navy actually got. Now the Navy did uh, test them in 30 caliber, in 50 caliber, and a 1.1 inch version, which would be what, something like 28, 29 millimeter. Um, ultimately, the 1.1 inch was deemed too complicated, which makes sense, kind of looking at this thing. Um, and the 20 millimeter Ehrlichan and the 40 millimeter Bofors were used instead. Now, this particular gun, I can't really show you a whole lot on it because the whole thing pretty much is frozen up and we can't get any of the bits to move here. Um, however, there are a couple things I can point out. One interesting one, the barrel's on the top here with the gas system underneath. The grip, yes, indeed, comes up this way, and then this is the trigger, so you would fire it like that. Uh, in most of the patents, Hudson has suppressors on his guns, and I expect the reason this gas tube comes out in front is because this gun would have originally had about a 12-inch long suppressor threaded to it. Now, the focus of Hudson's patents is is on a couple different things, but primarily um, a constant recoil system, where he had, what he was trying to do was develop a system where a, a piece of machinery would be moving in opposite to the projectile going forward or in opposite to the bolt going backward to balance out the recoil impulse of the firing. So this is actually very much like one of the developmental guns that uh, has come out of Russia very recently, one of the counterbalanced guns. Uh, how well this worked, I really can't tell. Um, there are no, no existing trials reports that we can find beyond a mention in one book that it was deemed too complicated, that a well-trained crew in a, a uh, easy peacetime situation could operate the gun, but a quickly trained crew in a simulated combat situation couldn't. Uh, that, that didn't work for them. So. I'll tell you what, I do have a fair amount of correspondence from Hudson. Um, a lot of it is basically business griping and financial wrangling back and forth. Um, but there are some other interesting documents in there. I will publish all of that, everything I have, on ForgottenWeapons.com. And I'll also uh, publish the patents that are associated with Hudson. So if you take a look at the link in the description below, that'll take you to my website where I can actually post that sort of data, which isn't in video format. So if you're interested, take a look at that, and uh, I will let you guys dig through the patents and see what you can figure out about how this thing worked and if there was actually anything useful to be gained from it. Uh, you know, you can get a patent on something that's totally bogus. Uh, they, they no longer require you to prove that what you're patenting is actually useful, just that it's novel and different from what anyone else has patented. So. You never know. This could have been something, uh, you know, something of genius that was uh, squashed by financial wrangling and politics, or it could have been just a goofy idea in the first place. I don't know. Uh, I hope you enjoy the video. 
uh, I would like to thank the Cody Museum for letting me take a look at this thing. Uh, if you enjoy this type of content, please consider subscribing to my Patreon account. This what gives me the funds to come to places like Cody, Wyoming and bring this sort of interesting tool room prototype uh, to you guys who for some reason are also interested in it like I am. Uh, and of course, if you're in the Cody area, absolutely make sure to stop in, check out the Cody Museum. It's a fantastic collection. Thanks for watching.